We can game honest reviews. Today's review is on the game Nether, powered by Freedom, more specifically Marky Dragon Network. This was a copy given to me free by said network. I'm going to give you my honest thoughts and opinions. But before we get into the actual review, I'm going to show you the table of contents. That way you can quickly jump to any segment you're curious about of this game. But without further ado, let us get started. On screen now you're going to see which version of Nether I am reviewing as well as the minimum requirements. That way you can, if you want, pause this video and check them out see if you'll be able to play this game. Nether was developed by Phosphor Games and utilizes the Unreal 3 game engine. Nether was officially released October 31st, 2013. Nether is a first person survival shooter that introduces the player to a desolated cityscape loosely based on Chicago. Nether features unique creatures known as the Nether. Nether presents players with a meld of PvE and PvP with unique experiences thus determined by the Nether. The story of the Nether is as followed. The Coal, which is a mysterious event that is the prime cause of the Nether's existence, occurred nearly a decade before the beginning of the game. The Coal resulted in the transformation of most of humanity, about two-thirds of the population into humanoid mutations. While this event has been discussed and researched extensively in the world of Nether, the actual cause, purpose, is completely unknown. All that is known is on the same day the largest recorded solar flare hit Earth. It is possible that the solar flare triggered the coal. Now let's go on to gameplay. So when you start Nether, you're put into a server lobby, and as you can read on the left, you have where the server is located, you have the tribe that's in control, and then you have the amount of players. A server can max at 64 players, and the reason this is important is the more players that there are on a server, the more reward you get, so a higher risk, higher reward. You can play on the servers that have a little less, but you won't have that much luck with finding loot. So I'm going to hit a medium sized server here at 7 and then I'm going to hit connect. Now once here you're going to be taken to a character creation screen. Now these are basically, there's really no perk or benefit, these are just what you're going to look like in the game. They are paid skins uh, but you have three free options. You have Urban Warrior, you have Urban Warrior 2, and you have Survivalist. Then you get into the paid options. Now I'm going to play as the character I already have, who is an Urban Warrior 2, and here's his stats. He's got 10 experience and all this, so I'm going to hit play, and then I will meet you in the game. Now after you select your character, you are spawned in the world. You can choose the world or a safe zone. I chose the safe zone, and the controls are very simple. It's WASD to move around. If you hold shift while hitting WASD, you can run. It's space to jump and C to crouch. That's the basic controls. Now, the idea of Nether is that you're a courier. Uh, your job is to deliver packages from safe zone to safe zone to help what little left of humanity survive. So as you can see here, we have some packages. Uh, we are in the West Trading Outpost and we need to go to the RTO. So I'm going to grab this package. We're going to look for ones that say RTO. Uh, LSZ is the safe zone you're going to start. It's the Lakeshore safe zone. Uh, basically, you spawn in there and you're going to have to do a tutorial and it's going to teach you everything I'm talking about here. Here is the market. Um, once you have your package and you're ready to go, all you have to do is just simply put, leave the safe zone and enter the dangerous world that is Nether. Uh, it's very important to note that since my account level is high, I get a little extra bonuses, which is a very nice touch. Uh, from the get-go, you might notice that I have a health level of health level health of 1020 that's because of my account level being five now we're no longer in the safe zone so here's our first instance of combat nether creature hit gonna have to wait for him to spawn oh god and he's taken care of Ooh, he had a nether he actually had a weapon so it's pretty good gonna pick up the bone slugs you hit I to access your inventory and now uh, we can see that his weapon had... Let's check the stats. You can just click to check stat. His weapon's the same. So we get a little more ammo and a new weapon. Uh, we can trade that at the outpost when we reach it. So now that we have that, uh, it's important to note that you hit M to view your map. Uh, I'll place a marker on our, the outpost we need to go. Not yet. God, no. Okay. Uh, Okay. 
Don't wish to die. Don't wish to die. Okay. Player level increased. Uh, basically, the nether are your main enemy, and they're going to make your job very difficult. Uh, because we collected those packages at the safe zone, the nether creature will be uh, drawn to you. You might also notice that I get a reputation 10 with hope. Uh, that is the tribe, and I will explain that later in this review, what exactly tribes are and why you should join one, why you would want to. But this is just general gameplay to show you a bit of the game. And I must say, Nether is one of those games that will get your heart racing. If you check near our health, we can see how much food, how much stamina and food we need to eat. Uh, food is about half and stamina. The more we run, obviously, the more stamina is going to deplete. So you kind of are going to want to watch that. So we're just going to be making our way through, following our mini-map. And it's also a compass, but let us run. Nether creature up ahead. Hear those screeches. Get your heart pumping. Alright, creature destroyed. Oh god, behind us. Shrieker. Alright, player level increased. Uh, yeah, the nether creature is definitely interesting. And you're gonna want to, uh... Oh, shoot! Out of weapon, out of ammo, out of ammo. Take it. You're gonna wanna be careful. Come on, come on. Ah! But that's pretty much the ma ga bleh, basic gameplay. I'm gonna go on to my actual thoughts of the game now. One of the good things about Nether is the environment. It is just so immersive. When you play Nether, you know which game you're playing, and it's its own unique thing, and it's very beautiful. Just the way it's made, like that cityscape in the background, just searching, you'll find this game is very beautiful, and there's a lot of little details that really make it look amazing. Now how amazing the world is, sometimes you're spawned right next to nether creatures and when you're a level 1 character, you don't really have that good of material to be facing these higher level creatures. And it becomes very difficult because when you're spawned with just a knife in the middle of nowhere, I know you can have the option to choose a safe zone or world zone when you first start a character, but sometimes you start a character and you might get kicked from a server and when you go join back you're placed in these locations where these high level creatures are and it's just not really fair and especially when in the game it claims that you are not spawned near creatures or players I've found that to be a little less than true I like how when you leave the safe zone the threat is immediate you can just walk around the world you have a 10 second protection time which is nice it gives you a little bit of balance that way if you run into a creature and you're just low on health you can run back but you can also if ready fight right from the safe zone and it's just really good but when the creatures teleport away that threat becomes even more real and I love how real the threat feels in this game however sometimes the threats too real the creatures just spawn in out of nowhere and when you just spawn and you don't really have that good of weapons you're kind of left there with basically a toothpick to take down this huge creature and you don't you don't really have that much of a chance, and more often than not, you find yourself dying, and it's just not really fair, or for that matter, that much fun. However, another good thing is the tribe system, and with a tribe, you and a group of friends can easily take down those tougher monsters. With tribes, you can gain reputation with said tribe, you can meet new players, you can have a really fun experience, and tribe members can trade things with each other. They can do a lot of things that is just really beneficial to gameplay, and it makes you feel like joining a tribe is worth it. You can, you just gain benefits, and more importantly, it's just really cool. You can also trade weaponry, as you see, these two players here trading weapons. It's just something that makes you feel really immersed in this world by adding the tribes. One of the bad things about Nether is sometimes the mechanics just don't work. For example, I find more times than not the search mechanic just doesn't work. You can be searching there so many times trying to get an item and it just doesn't work. And it takes you out of the immersion when you j literally just can't search something you find within the world, be it a locker, be it a trailer, it just takes you out of it. And it's really something that should work because if you can't search these objects, I mean, what's the point? 
However, one system that works really well is the leveling system for both character and player. It gives you an incentive to keep wanting to play the character leveling system just to figure out what all these things do. You can be a guns character, a melee character, and it gives you the options. It gives you different branches, but the account level system is a great incentive for you to start and continue to playing. Uh, you level up your account the same way you level your character, and you accumulate rewards. So if you die with a lot of good things, it gives you a little help to start over again and want to start over again which is something very friendly and kind though it can be very hard to level when the game is really buggy for instance sometimes you just can't attack nether creatures and it's frustrating because you can just be sitting there and it just doesn't detect it and it's why but when the combat does work, it works very well, to the point where you are on the edge of your seat fighting these creatures that are just so challenging and fun, and it's just a lot of fun, and just leveling up is rewarding, and that's something they do great. Some of my personal suggestions are those followed. Obviously, you want to fix the errors I've mentioned, such as the searching just not working, or the hit detection not working, but there's some other issues I want to bring up that I think should be fixed. The game asking price for this is $14.99 on Steam. That's a pretty, pretty high price. So my thing is, when you play this game, there are a lot of microtransactions really early, and most of them are cosmetic. But some of them, such as keys and things, will greatly influence how this game goes. And I don't think there needs to be that many microtransactions this early on. Another suggestion of what I would like to see is lore being introduced to this game. On this game's Wikipedia page, there is page upon page of lore written about these tribes, these creatures, and it's very interesting to read. But when you play this game, there's none of that. There's very little of it. You get an idea, but why not implement it more? I know you want it to be a survival game, and I know that there are many survival games not that driven on story, but most of those don't have a story to go on. You have one here. I definitely recommend using it, because if you read it, really get to get the story, it's really interesting. And that could be courier packages. You can just add it, little things to the courier missions that make it interesting and that you learn and I understand that it's based on a character system that you know each time when you die you have to restart but it doesn't mean you have to restart the missions make the missions like that tied to the account level that way you do the missions and you get bonuses there instead of on the character just a suggestion but would I recommend this product honestly maybe but as it stands now I'm leaning towards no and here's why for this game it is too bugged and has too many issues to recommend purchasing it now. That doesn't mean when they fix these issues to not buy it. I would highly recommend buying this game later. But if you wish to buy it now, I would say wait for it to go on sale or wait for a, hundle, a humble bundle to include it. Because this game is a lot of fun and it works well, but it's not recommended at its current state. But that being said, I have really high hopes for this game. The combat's fun, when it works, it works well, and I can't wait to see what they do with it. I really hope they take my thoughts and suggestions, I would like to know your opinions in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you so much Phosphor Games and Marquee Dragon for giving me this opportunity to really test out this game and get a feel of it. And let me know in the comments, what do you think of my new series, Honest Reviews? Did you like this video? Did you like the format? Let me know in the comments below, I'm really curious. If you did like this video, click that annotation on screen to be brought to my previous video. And while you're at it, if you really like this video and you like what I'm doing, you can hit that subscribe button, it really does help me out. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a great day. Bye.